Axel, come on, bud. Good morning, everybody. What's going on? Today, we're going to be heading to the machine shop to hopefully pick up the K24. We just have to make a few stops along the way, but fingers crossed, it's going to be done. So I had to drop off Emery at my in-laws and so we got to run to the bank real quick and then we're gonna be heading back up to the machine shop. Oh boy. Do you guys want horsepower? Cuz uh, that's what horsepower looks like right there. Just a ton of that. So on the housing board, you don't need the bearings to measure that? No, because the housing board gives you like an eight-tenths of a thousandth tolerance, mm -hmm. so it's got to be in that range. Okay, okay. And since you, you board all of the uh, cylinder walls to the same exact spec, so when you gap like this grains, you don't have to, do you, do you normally keep them in order? Yeah, we put them in a bag, so if okay. you don't say bag with number one, that's still number one. Okay, cool. Um, and on the ring gap, um, just in your experience, like how much boost do people normally run with sleep blocks? 30, 60, a million? Like what do they normally run? I mean, the one guy that's got a Mitsubishi, he runs like 55. 55. That's like, that's straight really high. So what ring gap did you get this week? So it's a factor. Basically, it's something like this would be six thousandths per inch of bore. Whatever your bore size is, times 0 .006. 87.5? Yeah, yeah. So I can say that's 87.5 times 3.45 times 0 .006. That's 21,000 ring gallons. Okay. Now, that's excessive. It's a lot. The second ring will always be two thousandths bigger than wherever the top is. Okay, and so that's just what you would, that's what you would get them to if I was running 30 pounds to boost or whatever? 30 pounds, I would do five and a half. So okay. Do 3.45 pounds, uh, three point five pounds. So that's 19. So you have a 19 thousandths top ring on, on 30? Yeah. Okay, because I, I really just don't know. I couldn't tell you. I've never had it. Well, the piston manufacturer has a paper that comes with them. Okay. And it's going to give you recommendations. And it's going to say, like, mild boost, moderate boost, or extreme. When you install uh, main and head studs, do you install with the threads completely dry, or do you put leave on there? Molly? Everything, everything in an engine is lubricated. No Loctite on anything, right? Now, a harmonic balancer bolt you can Loctite. But that, that's, uh, Maybe. Yeah, if you do, do blue, it's a yacht. Don't you don't go extreme because there's been like expensive cranks where the threads are way down in here. So I've had to replace the front paint on my engine, and I getting that thing off was the worst. Like that LS right there, there. torques at 225. Dang and then you lock tight it, and it gets stuck. 
it might be 180. I might just be not remembering it correctly. I've got a video of it. But anywho, um, what about bearings? You, you, that service is completely dry. Dry on the sure. back side. Back the, right. The side that contacts the crank will have some type of assembly. Sure. What I've got like the O'Reilly Black Two engine assembly lube. Is that what y'all use, or do y'all use like something like Redline? That right there. That's what y'all use. It's called bearing guard from Cleveland. Okay, and that y'all had good success with that. Yeah, it's just a red. He's about to use it here, but it's just a red. Well, kind of a. That's what it looks yeah, like. it's gotcha. Just a thick. So, paste. using that stuff was that going to? Because um, I'm probably not going to have this engine together. I mean, I'm not going to put it together until and put it in the car and have it run until the head's back from you guys. So, would that stuff be okay to leave on there for mm -hmm. you know a few months? Yeah. So once I install the pistons, you know, some people I've seen they just dip it in a can of oil and put them in. Mm -hmm. Is that okay for them? Okay, because I was going to ask, like, what protective, you know, coating do I need to put on those sleeves? Because I know they're iron, they'll rust eventually. Yeah, as long as you oil the piston up before you put it in, should be it's fine. Good. Rod bearing oil clearance, we've already talked about that pretty much with the, getting the correct rod bearings. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so that's, that's fine. Um, with boost, would you have more or less bearing clearance? That's just a general more. question. You have more clearance? Yeah, the more power you make, the looser it's got to get. Really? Interesting. I can't wrap my mind around that. Yeah, like a stock engine is put together pretty tight. Pretty tight. And that's why they use thinner oils now, right? Okay. Okay. More clearance. This is such a great learning experience. The more power everything makes, the more it moves. The more right. the block moves, the more the crank moves. Gotcha. If, if things are moving and there's no clearance, they hit each other. Gotcha. Okay. Crank and bearings. So as far as a break-in period is concerned, I mean, I know some people, they build these engines and they put them straight on the engine dyno. Uh, I mean, is that, in your experience, would you do like a soft break-in or would you just go balls to the wall? Don't go balls to the wall. Basically, just break it in with heat cycles, meaning like drive the car normal, get everything up to operating temp, do that about three times. But the main thing is letting it cool between heat cycles. Right. Not, not overnight, but, you know, 30, 45 minutes of letting it cool. Gotcha. After that, you know, three three of those heat cycles, it's good to go. Because you're just breaking the rings in. That's all you're breaking in. Nothing else is getting broken. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I shouldn't see any metal at all in the oil filter. Now, you'll see some debris. Anytime you build a new engine, I don't care how clean you are, you're going to get some debris. Perfect. Okay. Now, after you do your first oil change, you might see a little bit. And then after that, it ought to start. But I shouldn't see nothing after a couple of changes mm -hmm. what oil should i run when i first start this bad boy up so no synthetic it's got to be conventional now conventional meaning you can run anything you want to run it doesn't matter really name brand uh, but i would use a 530 and also you can do synthetic in the future after yeah. it's broke in but not during break in okay no like zinc additive or anything no, not with a honda you don't need that gotcha okay I wanted to ask this after I gave you the head, but when I'm upgrading everything in the head, valves, seats, keepers, springs, you name it, but I'm not doing the cams. Uh, I've just heard that if you're going to do, I, I still want this to be pretty streetable, you know, and I've heard if you do cams, then you need to do, you know, get solid time and chain guides and a bunch of stuff. And it's just tougher on, on, you know, the K series mm -hmm. engines, but with getting like stiffer springs and things like that, will my stock cams suffer? Will they get ground down eventually? No, they should be fine. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just stay with stock cams. Okay. Unless you're all out like race, you know what I mean? Like you, you would do something different. But a stock cam, it's a street driven vehicle. Mm -hmm. Works absolutely. I still, you know, I want to take it to like track days, obviously, and and do some autocross because we have that down in Huntsville, and we've got. I live right next to the drag strip, but it's just an eighth mile. Yeah. You know, my car doesn't get over 70 miles an hour on that eighth mile. Right. Uh, so, but I'm hoping I'm trying to get those times way down, obviously. Right. Yeah. In your experience, do you guys normally use factory um, time and chain tensioners? Because I, I know there's a lot of aftermarket companies like Skunk Two Hybrid. They make their own double ratcheting system tensioners. Is Honda okay? A tensioner is something I would consider upgrading okay. over the factory Honda. Yeah, the ratchet type is kind of what you want to go with mm -hmm. because the factories will, will they will plunge back in. Right. Like if it sits over the weekend, doesn't get started, the mm -hmm. hydraulic pressure it'll bleed off. Okay. All right. 
because I've looked at getting some of those like gnarly four piston racing time and chain guides and then they said that they're 850 bucks and I'm like never mind yeah I don't want it to jump time and then bend yeah. a valve and I think then, all that stuff like factory stuff would be fine except the tension ring. tension okay that's what I figured believe me there's a lot more to it than just an engine you know right. what I mean like they're you know your tires and the drive line and you, you oh yeah I'm I'm like I'm basically planning on just destroying an axle like I mean like I, I'm afraid as soon as I get this engine in here get a good tune on it you know get it you know what I to you know drive it enough to where I feel reliable with it or it, it feels reliable to me clutch is going to be wasted trans is going to be wasted I'm going to do all this other stuff yeah trans usually hangs in there but clutch and axles that would be a, a weak point any other advice you can give besides just letting you guys build it <laughs> No, I mean, because it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you're over the a lot of the obstacles. Great. So. That's wonderful. That's great to hear. I have money for you today, by the way. <laughs> and thanks for letting me film, too. I know you. What are you doing up here? Dave it's upholstery. I worked at O'Reilly's. And What's going on, I know the man? The face looks familiar. I couldn't place you. What are you doing here? I'm picking up a block. Oh, I'm, I wish I was. <laughs> They're doing some work for me, too. I work up here in Brentwood. So. Oh, okay. You moved out of. No, I still live. I just work in Brentwood. Oh, okay. So you make a long drive every day, long like drive every day, like yeah, Galen does. Uh, man, it's see, so cool to see you. Man. Like I said, I knew I knew the face. Yeah, but yeah. It's been you. a couple years, man. But I never forget you coming in O'Reilly's all the time. Yeah, I still go in there all the time. Mm -hmm. So, man, it's so cool to see you. It's good to see yeah. you. Yeah. Hope I hope everything's been well with you in these crazy times that we're in. Yeah, yeah. We haven't had any issues at all. You still doing upholstery every now and then? No, I don't have time. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm working full time up here, so you know, the time I get home, I'm I'm used up. Yeah. I'm glad I called you before you got out of here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John. Yeah, he's been talking to me. I've been asking him to meet up with him. Oh, I know it. I know it. I try not to bug him too much. I'm probably the, the least intelligent person in the room. Awesome, because it said it was a custom kit. Yeah, what it is is some of these things will fit other engines, but they don't want you to know what engine it fit. Right. Yeah, because I tried to find these part numbers and just order from Summit or something. Because right. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think those are going like a Jetta, a Volkswagen, or right. something. Yep. I don't know, because it's got like that weird W-shaped engine, and those mm -hmm. fit that that application. But yep. anywho, do you need anything else from me? Get those in, get that torque on, check it, and I'll let you know what happens with that. And other than that, do the ring gaps, and that should be it. Yes, sir. I don't think there's anything else I can buy that you're going to need. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. I've replaced every bolt with a stud and every sleeve with a sleeve. I uploaded the video of the last time I was here, but the whole time I was the whole time I was filming, I was talking to you, and I had the camera oh, yeah. like this, so I wasn't like pointed at us or anything. So. Okay. Yeah, no awesome, dude. I appreciate you.
waiting for this moment? Kind of, you know, slowly gathering parts. Like I've had the sleeves that y'all put in there for me uh, for about a, two years. And then I bought the pistons about a year ago. And then I bought the rods about, you know, three months ago. And so slowly but surely I've gathered all the, you know, nice forged mm -hmm. components that you'd want to have if you're going to boost something. So yeah, it's definitely just been a process, but I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it and I know it's going to be able to take almost anything I throw yeah. at it. Me and my wife live right next to the drag strip in Huntsville Perfect. and I'm tired of uh, just doing 10 second passes in an eighth mile. It sucks. Like my dad is like, now you be careful at that drag strip. I'm like, dad, I, my top speed is 65 miles an hour. I mean, how, how much more careful do you want me to be? I always got to remember, um, see Honda. So it's a lash adjustment. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you have that last adjustment set correctly, mm -hmm. cam failure shouldn't really be a big issue gotcha. at all. Now, if you set lash too tight, yeah. Yeah, because it's trying to push that it's trying to push that valve open mm -hmm. rather than it can go. Right. So then it's just gonna, that lobe and that, that rod are just gonna like, not not have a good time. Not gonna jive, right. Yeah. See, cause you saying that makes sense to me, mm -hmm. that they're yeah, too tight. All valve train, yeah. it's going directly off the cam. Yeah. All of it. Mm -hmm. Any type of, I mean, when it moves, the cam's moving. And right. When the valve's opening or closing, the cam's moving. Okay. Yeah, everything is, is in direct correlation with each other, valve yeah. train and cam wise. See, and that's what I'm trying to learn because, like, I don't, I don't know nothing about this more, stuff. The more, Not really. the more and more you see it, the more and more you do it, yeah. you get so much better at it. That's really about the, your only way. Yeah. I mean, you can read about it all you want, but until you see it and do it. Mm -hmm. I talked to John about y'all building it, and I'm just thinking to myself, I can do it. I don't know how much I trust my torque wrench. How do you build trust in tools like that? In what kind tool? of torque wrench is it? It's a Tecton. Does it do the angles too? It does not do torque angle, but I upgraded everything to ARP studs. So okay. I shouldn't okay. have to do torque no, angle. No, you shouldn't. So uh, no torque to yield bolts in this thing. Like I'm trying to make the most bulletproof block I can. Um, I mean, it's really up to you. Uh, if it's got good review, how old is it? <sighs> bought it maybe five months ago oh yeah i don't know i know you can get them recalibrated but i don't mm -hmm. know who threw for you because uh, i've got a snap on and they do angle and well everything. see that's the thing like uh would you would you say that the the price that you spend on a torque wrench is a direct correlation to your amount of trust in it i mean could you take a 40 dollar, 50 dollar torque wrench and be happy with it or do you need a 500 600 snap on would you have more trust in that because no. of the amount of money you spent snap on I have a lot of trust in Snap-on, per se. Because you've used it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've used it. Now, I built a um, 6.2 LS, uh, and I had to, but I built it all back to stock. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any a ARP or nothing, and I had to buy the angle torque wrench, so that's why I got it, and I love that thing. I mean, yeah. it's absolutely amazing. And that's the Snap-on. Mm -hmm. And okay. it's 3 All digital. Too. Yep, all digital, 3 8 I didn't even, I didn't, I didn't need the half inch until I had to torque the cam phaser back on. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I love it. I'm sure it's worth it, but... You know, I'm just, it's, this is just a hobby for me. I mean, you do it for, you do it for a living. I'm a five months old torque wrench. I think it'd be fine. Yeah. I don't see you having much of a problem at all with it. It should be. With a $40 torque wrench? As long as it's not Harbor Freight, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Harbor Freight's sketchy. Yeah. See, as, if I could just, if I could just find someone that could calibrate it, because I've looked, okay, but the, uh, they put it on there and they test it. It's like, okay, we're going to set it to 60. Oh, it's at 59.6. You're good. It's within a certain tolerance. Um, and you know, there's guys, you know, on Amazon that have taken this exact torque wrench and they, uh, you know, it claims to be within plus or minus 4% of its actual torque value. And guys have tested it when it's brand new out of the box and it's plus or minus 2% and it's, they're super stoked and happy with it. And so, I mean, I can only, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. It'll be right. I've only used it to torque, um, ball joints and my wheels, my lug nuts. So nope, you'll be fine. Use it. Well, thanks for letting me film, dude. Absolutely. I appreciate it. What was your name? Aaron. Aaron. Two A's. A. A. Ron. A. A. Ron. Yeah. A. A. Ron. <laughs> I'll be back up here to pick up the block at some point. Cool. And uh, then I got to, once that's done, head's coming up here. Sweet. So you'll probably be messing with that. Oh, yeah. That'll be all me. So it's going to be decked, port polished. I think that's it. What else can you do to a head? Porting and polish probably. I don't know if we'll do that, but we'll have somebody else do that. Um, we try and steer clear of porting mm -hmm. because nowadays you can just take it to a certain shop they'll throw it in the machine and just run it through their cnc yeah. program so for us to do porting without a cnc machine it's kind of a waste a waste of money gotcha so so yeah but anything else found jobs uh, decking 
pressure testing, you know, all that stuff. Master plan was to get the block finished 100%, build it, mm -hmm. put a garbage bag over it, cover it in grease, yep. leave it alone. Buy the valves, buy the springs, buy all the stuff. All the yeah. So that way the downtime on the car is as little as possible. Because I like to be able to move it to cut the grass. I mean, it's, it's just convenient. And so, yeah. <laughs> Why do I get that reaction out of yeah. everybody? Well, hey, at least you don't want it, you know, looking like a trailer park. Exactly. Um, so, you know, I want to get all the parts. And I want to, yeah. Do you like Super Tech? You do? Because I, I have a lot of guys bring in Super Tech stuff. For like, like this, Hondas, Mitsubishi's. Oh yeah, like this uh, S2000, Honda S2000, all Super Tech stuff. I can job with that. Um, he went with, I think it was one or two millimeter oversized valves. Uh, so we're going to have to cut the seats for the oversized valves. Good lord, the, it's so small mm -hmm. compared to stuff like that. <laughs> like it's so small, but they, you can rev the piss out of mm -hmm. these things. It's like, insane. Like 9500 or something like that? Mm-hmm, yep. That's my plan. My, my current rev limit's about 9,200, but I got a I got a four piston racing ported oil pump, and they say that that sucker won't cavitate until like past 11,000 RPM, which I don't know if I'm gonna push it that far because it probably won't. It'll probably stop accelerating at like 8,000 RPMs. Who knows? But uh, I just wanted that extra insurance because I just don't I just don't want this to up. Not even a little yeah. bit. I want this to work the first time. Mm -hmm. So Subaru heads. Oh, yeah. yeah, WRX, yeah. is that a 2.0 or I it was a 2.0? 2.0? They look 2.0. Yeah. 2.5 is like a little different. Yeah, that gum, y'all yeah. do a little bit of everything. Everything. I love it. So you think I should go with Super Tech valves and stuff? It's up to you. Do your, do your research. No, it's not. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna get out of your hair, AA Ron. I Thanks for talking to me, man. Absolutely, bud. It was great yep. meeting you. Yeah, great to meet you. Uh, my YouTube is called Snowdrift if you want to check it out. There it is. Right there? Yeah, that's me. And my latest video, Machine Shop Can't Give Me My 1000 Horsepower Engine Block. Because <laughs> the last time I was up here, John was like, oh, I need those ARP main studs because we need to measure the journal clearance mm -hmm. again because the clamping force is different. And I'm like, damn yeah. it. <laughs> yep. So I had to bring those back up here. Cool. Right here. It was great to meet you, bud. Awesome. Yeah, I'll let you get back well. to work. I know I've taken up some of your time. <laughs> Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Got a lot of really good information today, you guys. Like I'm, I feel like every single time I come up here, I meet someone new and exciting. Um, Aaron, AA Ron, it was awesome to meet you, dude. I hope you see this. What a legend! The dude like pulled out his phone and subscribed to the channel on the freaking spot, man. Uh, I'm I'm super excited. Like I can't even I can't even like relate to you guys how excited I am about this stuff because like I don't know none of this stuff. I mean, you guys have seen me replace you know, uh, lower control arm bushings and ball joints and install all this like hybrid racing stuff, fuel lines. I mean, bolt on stuff, anybody can learn how to do that shit. Anybody can. This is like super, like highly elite stuff that's going on with this engine. And the things that they do here is just utterly incredible. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited to, to get the block back, learn how to build it. And I know that none of them are going to leave me hanging along the way. Like, if I have any questions about anything, they're, they, I mean, John answers all my questions. Bottom line is, is I'm stoked. I am so utterly stoked. So, going to head back home now. Um, paid John the almost all the money. Uh, I owe him a little bit more. Uh, but uh, he's got to uh, check the journal clearances with the ARP main studs, torqued down, bolted down, all that good stuff. And uh, he's got to gap the piston rings for our boost application. After that, that is it. Block can be assembled. The entire rotating assembly is done. And once that happens, we're going to uh, assemble it. And then we're going to start collecting parts for the head. And uh, that's probably going to take a little while. But uh, I'm going to get it done uh, as soon as I, you know, as soon as I possibly can. So thank you guys so much for uh, watching. Uh, if you liked it, make sure you share it. Hit the uh, notification bell to stay up to date with all my upcoming videos for my 1,000 horsepower K-Series. Uh, remember to share the video with your dog and I guess your family and your friends. They don't really mean as much to me as your dog does. Um, eat your vegetables and have a great freaking day.